can you see? Since this country was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony to its national loyalty. Now the trumpet summons us again. And the rock is Not as a call to bear arms, not as a call to battle, but a call to bear the burden of a struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. Every modern president has called on Americans to serve. Is service to country a citizen's obligation? Some say it's a moral imperative, that service unites us and protects our freedoms. Others say it's a matter of individual choice. Who wants you? National service, the draft, and democracy. Service as an idea in America is not new. The CCC was one of the first programs of an initial unemployment package that Roosevelt used to put people back to work. The NYA was a different service-focused organization. So the NYA was very, very akin to the kinds of programs that we see through AmeriCorps today. I am Jeremy Johnson. I'm Jeff Foster. I am Anielka Sanchez Godinez. I am Diana Pimentel. We are the Let's Get Moving program, Community Health Corps AmeriCorps. I am Kendra Ryan. We are Jumpstart. We are the Youth Empowerment Corps. I am Angela Utah. Kelly. We, we are, are the Boston YWC List Youth AmeriCorps. And we are serving America. We are serving America. And we are serving America. But there's never been a consensus around the idea of national service. Now look, I'm a reasonable guy, I don't understand something. Why, why should anybody do something for someone else? You know, Stephen, when you help others, you help yourself. In particular, we, I think we have to call on our young people, ages 17 to 24, to give a year full time, to dedicate their energy. Give a year? Are you, are you calling to draft people? No. Are you inserting a draft? No. It's a nice it's, draft? It's, it's, it's a nice all, this draft? It's all, it's all politics. September 14th. Zero, zero, one. Ninety-five percent of the people will read national service to mean military conscription. If you look at the history of conscription, it really wasn't until World War II that there was a general sense that the implementation of the draft was fair. It's only with Vietnam, which was an immensely unpopular war, that the American people withdrew that authority from government. When Richard Nixon declared an end to the draft, the president was agreeing to a new contract, and the new bargain was a bargain based on individual choice. That if you wish to serve, that is an admirable thing, go do it. But if I choose not to serve, there's no moral significance about my choice as opposed to your choice. For Americans, individual choice is paramount today. Other countries require service for national security and solidarity. Many democracies have done away with mandatory military service, but now call for civilian service. I want to see a program which engages young people, not military, not compulsory, but universal. You do see a resurgence, I think, across the world in terms of service. I believe in voluntary service, but a national service effort, in my view, is an institutionalized system, first of all, and it's a full-time program for at least 10 months. I will bring Americans together to strengthen our communities. There are many of us, I think, who believe that 
you can take the best idea in the world and you turn it over to some federal bureaucracy and they're going to make a hash of it. Are national service programs only expensive feel-good exercises in civic engagement? Do they really do anything that individuals can't on their own? According to my training, uh, is that a good kid or bad kid? Uh, Yet AmeriCorps and Teacher Corps programs have long waiting lists of applicants. Why? Well, I heard about it like, from people talking and stuff, but i never really been to this place. Because I want to help people out that need it, that really need it. I don't like to see people on the streets and stuff. I lost my brother to suicide after the service, and this is my contribution. I feel like if I can do something, a little bit, then I just want to do what I can. So, this is for my brother. <laughs> Not everybody's going to carry a weapon. I mean, that we are in an armed service. That is the core of what the military does. And that is not for everybody, and nor would I want it to be for everybody. There are different types of service, and I think that it's that calling to serve something bigger than yourself, to serve a larger community, to serve people that you don't know, to people who you may never meet, and to people who you may not immediately think deserve it. That is the service that I think is really to be emphasized, and not whether or not you carry a weapon and wear a uniform, or you know, you're a teacher in a public school. But if it's a national program, wouldn't this be another government encroachment on our individual freedom? I'm asking you to stand up and play your part. If you do, I promise you, your life will be richer. Our country will be stronger. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to go sign this bill. What does it mean to be free? What do we mean by freedom? For a subject to which we attribute such enormous importance. Freedom is something that we never really bother to examine. Building social capital is a global necessity. When you take a look at the conflicts that we have between countries and between peoples, the question is, how do you establish common ground for people to come together and resolve their issues and conflicts? Each of us can understand his or her own situation only actually by understanding everybody else's situation. So there's a funny way in which what it's really about is sort of encouraging people to see that the project of self-understanding, of knowing what their lives mean, what their lives are about, uh, you know, why they have felt the way they have felt over the course of their lives, that they can do that only actually by coming to understand the people that they're in partnership with. There is this term commonweal, which really does conjure up notions of the existence of some common good. And the word commonweal has, for all practical purposes, vanished from our vocabulary. As Americans, what is our obligation to our country? Democracy is, importantly, an ongoing conversation about responsibility. How do you respond when somebody says, ah, service, taking a year out, that's not my responsibility. I pay my taxes, I vote, you know, that's enough, leave me alone. I would tell this person, well, you know, I think we're right in the moment of having a conversation about responsibility. The conversation continues with Who Wants You? National Service, the Draft, and Democracy, coming fall 2012.